Um, I have the release notes open for a reason because this demo is uh, based on the, the CE bundle. We just downloaded the bundle. And then down below, we have the, um, the MTK notes. And here's the zip file that we've used. So we've just dropped this zip file into the web app of Magnolia. What that means is that, again, the front-end developer using something like brackets uh, can just look at all of the files, again, without needing an IDE, just a text editor, and they can make changes here. They can either you know, just look at it to understand it, they can copy them and rename them, or they can literally just uh, change a file here and, because the uh, file directory files come first in, in the loading order. They're the priority. So let's demonstrate that. Um, I'll go to Magnolia, and I have a page here, the What We Believe page, and I've added an HTML component because the demo uses the MTK HTML. So of course I can edit it from within Magnolia, but let's look at what a developer can do now. So I could, for example, um, change the name of the dialog. So I'll just change this YAML file here. My edited HTML component, and I'll save it. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and change the FTL, and I'll just uh, wrap the whole thing in a div, give it a style, uh, border solid one uh, black one px. That's right. And close the div. Okay, if I jump over to the console, um, I can see the last comment is that it's it's picked up my changes to the dialog. So I know that at least that part will work. And I'll go back to the page and let's edit that. And now we can see the name of the HTML component is my edited HTML component. So it's just to show that it's 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 picking up the changes that I made there. And then um, let's just look at the the site. And now this woohoo has the black border, so it's picked up the FTL uh, change as well. For those of you who don't know what processed resources is, it's basically just a file that you can process as if it was a free market template. And it ships with an example where there's a basic flat CSS file here that has no processable free marker and another one that is using free marker inside the file. So here you see that we're using a, a free marker assignment to a variable called text color. We give it a color value and then later in the file we reference that. And that's, that's use case number one perhaps where you want to process some CSS and do, uh, do things like, uh, let's say you have a hotel site where you have a travel site with multiple hotels, very similar, but you want to change the style for each, for example. And this is a handy method to do that. Uh, when you request this kind of a file, you request it through the slash resources path. That's the one that processes. And if I request this file, you'll see that the free marker is evaluated and the color value is actually inserted there. The other popular use case is aggregating or merging JavaScript files. So while you're developing, you might want to keep your JavaScript files for carousels, for teasers, for navigation in the smaller snippets. You can put them here, edit them handily in a small, small package, but when you serve them, you want to aggregate all into a long file and serve that to the browser as a single thing. So um, to make this possible at the parent node, you want to do something like this, a simple list, free market list directive that picks up all the children and renders their content one after. So there's two main uh, new features in the travel demo. Uh, one of them is an implementation of the public user registration. And the other one is an advanced form. So you can see uh, right away in the header, uh, we have now a login and register uh, links. And there's also a members section. So if I'm not logged in, I just come to it. I go to the members section. Ah, OK. I can register. I can access member content. So mm, I'd like to access member content. Oh, I get a, a login screen. 
Well, I'm not a member yet, so I could click this register or this one and sign up. And register. Okay. How could you forget this? <laughs> How could I forget that? Yeah, that should be should be more required. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so we're using the mechanism, the registration mechanism, where you're, you're instantly registered. So now I can log in. Not a super user. And now I can access, I'm, I'm immediately forwarded to the, uh, to the exclusive member content. So I get this cool picture. Um, so this is, we, we wanted to show off that feature, the, the, the recovering passwords feature. Um, but this is also kind of a stepping stone to further more advanced demos that can rely on members, such as personalization and that kind of thing. So and the other is the advanced form. So I'll go back to the home page. Um, on every tour, there's a book tour button. This is used to bring up a dialogue. You've, this is, you've reached the end of the world. Uh, now we actually implement that uh, with kind of a, a wizard uh, registration form. This shows off all the features. It's not just a multi-step form. It shows off almost all the features of the form uh, module. So every field is there. Every validation is there. Um, there are HTML components, so if you look at it on a mobile device, you'll have the nice input fields. Um, I can go to my next step, and now I want to emphasize something. Oh, there was a so I, now I see my my summary or my breadcrumbs. Book your tour, personal details, review. But if I go back, there's actually a conditional step. Do I have special meal requirements? Yes. And now if I go to the next step. I actually have a new step in my uh, checkout process. So I'll do vegetarian and uh, add a little note there. And now I get to this the uh, summary uh, page. So this shows me all the options that I've selected. This is a feature of the form module. And I can also uh, upload a file for the traveler's card. Um, and let's confirm the booking. OK, my tour is booked. An email has been sent to me. Let's uh, verify that. OK, so from the demo, I've received an email. And it has all of the uh, information I've entered and my photograph. Here, I have a very long page um, company. You can see that it has many components. It keeps scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And if I edit one of those components, let's say this text and image here, now it's in focus, it's in the middle of my screen. I change the text a little bit. And when I save, what used to happen, I was taken to the top of the page and I had to find my position again. Now I stay. When you duplicate an item, such as when I duplicate this page, the duplicate will be created right after the item instead of at the bottom. Uh, so here, I'm going to duplicate the tour page, and there's the clone right there. The JCR browser that you all know can now browse in a single app any workspace. This is a major, major enhancement for that people have been asking for the longest time. So this is very useful for folks, for example, who are trying to learn how the imaging engine works. They can open the browser and go and look at what sort of images the Magnolia has stored in the cache, change your image renditions, variations, and delete them from here, and you'll see them reloaded again. A very, very useful feature. Um, this browser can display system properties as well. So here I'm in the config. Oh, let's go to the website workspace, rather. And I can check this box, which is now hard to see because of my resolution, but it will show system properties that you typically would not want to show. 
uh, but they are not editable. If I try to change any of these, it will give me a warning and say you can't, and that's how things should be.